Hi, hello, hi. So as some of you may know, if you follow me on Twitter, back in August, September, my girlfriend and I ordered do you mind? We got the 23andMe DNA kits and we got the health one. It's supposed to give you more information about your health. <laughs> This video is not sponsored. We pay for them ourselves. Before we get into this, anytime we're talking about the body, I just like to give a quick trigger warning for anatomy and anatomical terms and stuff like that. Also, we're gonna be talking about chromosomes and I have XX chromosomes. So if that's something that's triggering to you, just wanted to give you a quick little warning. So today I want to review with you my 23andMe genetic results. I never made this video because I was honestly worried that you wouldn't find it interesting at all and that I wouldn't be animated enough or expressive and dramatic enough for this to be captivating in any way. But you know what? Heck it. We're gonna do it anyway. I hope that you enjoy this and find it at least somewhat entertaining. This is my 23andMe page. These are my results. Uh, when you're inputting your 23andMe information, I noticed that you have to put male or female. And I put female uh, just based on the fact that it seems as though the language on these websites is just if you have XX chromosomes, your only option is to put female. So I wish they would be able to do that without using the words female and male, but whatever. We're not going to get into that debate here. We're not here for that today. Update your website. Let me just explain to you how to get your information from 23andMe onto Livewello. We're gonna be going over my results in Livewello. The reason being that they actually give a lot more information in my opinion. There are a lot more health and genetic reports. They actually show you the genotypes that they are using to detect the likelihood of having the phenotypes. Genotypes are the code, I suppose, that shows up in your DNA. And phenotype is the expression of the gene in your body. So let's say the genetic code for my eye color could be brown eyes dominant and blue eyes recessive, but my phenotype is brown eyes because brown eyes are the gene that are expressed physically in my body. So just a little breakdown of genetics. Hi, welcome to my channel. Apparently now I teach people about genetics. <laughs> what you do is you go up here to your profile button, you click browse raw data, and up here you click on download your data. Scroll to the bottom, you submit your request. In a couple minutes, if not a couple seconds, they should send you an email with your raw data. You download that and then you go to Livewello and you, of course, you make a profile. I'm gonna go to add new profile so it's like I'm starting over. We're gonna call him John John. And now John John is going to go to records, go to documents, and John John is going to upload a document, choose file, and that's where you're going to download the document with your raw information from 23andMe. Or at least that's how I remember I did this. <laughs> I learned this from Annie Segarra's video. I'm going to leave a link to that video in this description. So we're going to delete John John. He doesn't even go here. So for starters, let's look at my 23andMe results. So ancestry composition, 100% Aaron and Sweeney. Big shocker here, 77... <laughs> 0.1% Italian. A shock to everyone, I know. 7.2% Greek, 7.1% Spanish. That is pretty much exactly <laughs> what I expected it to be. Do you, do you mind, sir, sir, sir? Can I help you? Have you been served yet? Make a video about me, dad. One day, ma'am, we'll do 23 new results for you. So my mom's family is from Sicily. My father's family is from Marcagen. Those are both different regions of Italy. Sicily is an island to the south of Italy between Tunisia and I believe. I'm sorry. I'm so, am I interrupting you? Did you want to be in the video? You just want to scream? Okay, well. We'll let him scream. So anyway, Sicily is this little island between Tunisia and I think Greece. I don't know, I'm absolutely terrible at geography, so don't hold me to that. Get to know your relatives. They are 102% more likely to feel jittery after drinking caffeine. That makes sense because 102% is the exact percentage of jitteriness I feel after I drink caffeine every time. Good to know we're all a bunch of anxious little beans. 77% of your relatives have Italian ancestry. I mean, yeah, if I'm 77% Italian, wouldn't 77% of my ancestors also be Italian because I came from them? I don't know. Anyway, I don't really like the Neanderthal ancestry thing because it doesn't give any information, at least for me. It says in first place out of your family and friends, which just means I'm beating Karina. But if you actually scroll down, variants found are zero. So where are these 289 variants of which you speak? Maternal haplo group. Haplo comes from the word half. Your cells, all of your cells other than gametes, which are your eggs or sperm, are diploid, meaning that they have two sets of 23 chromosomes. I hope I'm explaining that well. In total, each cell has 46 chromosomes. Your sex cells are the only ones that have 23 
three chromosomes, and that is because when the sperm and the egg combine together, you have 23 chromosomes from the egg and 23 chromosomes from the sperm to make a new person that's 50% each parent. So yeah, just letting you know where the word haplo comes from. Honestly, this page is making me a little dysphoric and I'm not super into it, so I'm just gonna close that. Next, we have health results. So the carrier status, although it says that there are 44 reports, if you actually go to it, there are no variants detected for the carrier statuses that they are testing for. It doesn't mean that I am not a carrier for all of these. What 23andMe does is they test for the most common genetic variants that would indicate being a carrier of these conditions. However, they are not testing all variants for all of the conditions. So I know that they tell you that these tests aren't 100% percent correct, but I just wanted to give you a bit of an explanation as to what that actually means and why there are inaccuracies in your results. So just letting you know, variants not detected doesn't mean that you are not a carrier. Uh, it just means that of the variants they tested, they did not detect anything. Next, traits. I, I sound like such a cynical jerk. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm really into genetics. I think it's super cool. Uh, so that's why I look at this and I'm like, all right, this is a bit gimmicky. It's a bit commercially. It is not all objectively true. So the reason I'm not a big fan of the traits page is because it seems to me that they're basing the traits that they are giving you off of the likelihood of you having those traits based on your ancestry and not actually based on your personal karyotype. I'm pretty sure that's what they use for 23andMe. I'm not sure how they do their genetic testing, but anyway, the karyotypes are a picture of your chromosomes taken during the late stage of the metaphase part of mitosis. Mitosis is the process of cell division, the way that our cells go from one cell to a whole person. So when your cell is in its resting state, meaning that it is not dividing, your chromosomes are all loose and floating around. And because of that loose floatiness, they overlap with each other, and it's kind of hard to get any information from them when they're all tangled up like that. During mitosis, one of the things that happens is that your DNA condenses and they start to migrate toward the center of the cell and so they are all aligned relatively neatly and this makes it much easier to observe, making it a lot easier to read them. That freeze frame of your DNA in that condensed state is a karyotype and that is what I assume 23andMe is using when they give you these results. And if they have your karyotype, why would they not base your traits off of what they're reading in the karyotype? So that makes it that reading this traits page kind of feels really similar to like reading your horoscope. <laughs> you know, when you read your horoscope, there are some things that you're like, wow, that is exactly so spot on. That is so me. How would they know such a thing? And then there are other things you read and you're like, that is absolutely untrue, but maybe it applies to someone else. Who knows? That's what it feels like reading this traits page. Cause you go through things and you're like, that is definitively untrue. And then there are other things that you're like, yeah, it's true. Look, see proof. But it's like, it's not really proof of anything. They're just, <laughs> taking educated guesses on what is most likely to be the correct result based on your heritage, but that's not the same as your literal genetic makeup. Anyway, I'm gonna stop ranting now. <laughs> Let's go through this. Ability to match musical pitch. According to 23andMe, I am less likely to be able to match a musical pitch. However, that is false. I have perfect pitch, much like my father has perfect pitch. Next, asparagus odor detection, likely can smell, true. Bitter taste, likely can taste, also true. Cheek dimples, likely no dimples, correct. Cilantro taste aversion, slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro. I don't like cilantro, but it doesn't taste like soap to me. I know that the genetic thing there is that it tastes like soap to some people. It doesn't taste like soap, it just tastes like strong plants. Cleft chin, likely no cleft chin, also false. Earlobe type, likely detached, true. Earwax type, likely wet earwax. I don't know how to check for that. Eye color, likely brown or hazel eyes, true. Fear of heights, more likely than average to be afraid of heights. Very, very true. Finger length ratio, likely ring finger longer. That is false. My ring finger is actually shorter. Freckles, likely a lot of freckles. I do not have a single freckle on my face. Hair photo bleaching, more likely to experience hair photo bleaching. That's true, my hair turns very blonde in the sun. Hair texture, likely straight or wavy, true. Hair thickness, less likely to have thick hair. Rude but true. Light or dark hair, likely light. I think that's up for debate. Mosquito bite frequency, likely bitten more often than others. I'm not sure how they would calculate for that. Maybe I taste better, I don't know. Newborn hair, likely little baby hair. I guess they mean when I was born. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have that much hair. Photic sneeze reflex, likely no photic sneeze reflex. That is wrong and I am passionate about that one because I thought that everyone sneezed when they looked at the sun. Don't look at the sun, when they looked at the light. So whenever someone was like, oh, I have to sneeze, but I can't I can't get myself to sneeze. I'd be like, look at a bright light, it'll make you sneeze. And like, I just remember this being a big thing for me that I didn't know 
that didn't work for everyone. And I was like, that sounds fake. You're not a person. But no, turns out it's just, it's a genetic thing. It doesn't happen for everyone. It's strange. Red hair, likely no red hair, correct. Skin pigmentation, likely lighter skin. Sweet versus salty, likely prefer salty. That is false. I very much prefer sweet food. I always crave sweet food. Toe length ratio, likely big toe longer. That is true. Unibrow, likely no unibrow. That's true. I do nothing to my eyebrows. They just look like this. Wake up time. Likely to wake up around 8.34 a.m. Yeah, I guess. Widow's Peak. Likely no Widow's Peak. That is correct. All we have left is the wellness report on 23andMe. Alcohol flush reaction. Unlikely to flush. That is false. What are they basing this off of? Oh, there you go. Ah, genetic results. Cool. So they're showing this here, the genetic results. That's your genotype. And this here would be their predicted phenotype, meaning what they predict is the characteristic that actually presents itself in your body. So, GG, <laughs> GG. I flush a lot after drinking wine, but I think it's only wine, but also I never drink. I only ever sometimes have wine on special occasions, so maybe, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, before we leave the 23andMe website, there was one last thing in health, under health prediction. Of the variants they tested for, there were only two that held results, and that is age-related macular degeneration, which is basically vision loss as you get older. I have both the variants that they were testing for. I already knew that. And late onset Alzheimer's disease, I have one variant detected. So that's it for 23andMe. There is actually nothing else really to look at. I found it really anticlimactic, but I'm really excited to show you all Livewello. When you first input your raw data into Livewello, there's going to be a one-time fee. I think it's somewhere around $12, but don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. And then afterwards, you get access to a lot of health reports, but if you want access to all health reports, there is a monthly subscription fee. You could pay this fee one time and then just like go to town on all the reports and save them, or you could pay every month, I guess, if you want to. So Aaron and Sweeney may have an decreased risk <laughs> for aspirin allergy. True, I am not allergic to aspirin. Proton pump inhibitors, response to acid reflux medication. Aaron and Sweeney is likely to break down proton pump inhibitor drugs like Nexium quickly, leaving too little active medication to be effective. This is true. I have stomach ulcers. I actually have ulcers all along my digestive tract. It's kind of butts, but you know. So I just clicked on this for results so that I could get to this drop down menu. And these are all the things that they have the tests for. Actually, they have more, a few more health reports. What? This is the list of all the health reports that they have. Um, bless you. Yes. I don't really know which ones to go through. I don't want this video to drag on forever because I know it's already long, but all right, I'll give you an example as to why you should take these results with a grain of salt. This test here is supposed to detect your likelihood of having irritable bowel syndrome. A lot of people aren't a huge fan of this one because there were others in the comments who were like, I have IBS. What is this thing saying? But for example, on mine, it says, Aaron and Sweeney might have decreased risk of IBS due to AG genotype. However, if you go to a different test, this one is for susceptibility to both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, which are both inflammatory bowel diseases. IBD is different from IBS. And according to this results, I have an increased susceptibility to both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is a disease that causes inflammation and sores called ulcers in the lining of the rectum and colon. I have ulcers again throughout my entire digestive tract. It's a grand time. So I do have an inflammatory bowel disease, but it's different. <laughs> a lot of the issues I have with my digestive tract are caused by EDS, which is a different genetic condition. One that they don't really have tests for on this website. There are some community made tests, but I don't actually understand how to read them. You could go to Andy's video to check that out. But yeah, just letting you know, like they're testing for certain genotypes, but that doesn't give you a definitive result on what phenotype you will have because they're not testing for all genetic variants. Some phenotypes are dependent on multiple genetic factors and not just merely one like this. So just to highlight that for you if you go on this website. There are some, for example, these two, hot flashes in postmenopausal people. Here at the bottom, they wrote people with menopause, which I'm like, awesome, great, inclusive language. It wasn't that hard. But then the title is like menopausal women. And it's like, why did you, you were just, you were so close. Anyway, for this one, I have no result. The same goes for the histamine gene and sensitivity to aspirin, leave Advil, Motrin. Up until now, I thought that Motrin was actually written Moltrin, like M-O-L-Trin. So that's 25 years of mispronunciation. Great. <laughs> but yeah, for this one as well, I do not have enough information with my raw data for them to actually give me a result on this test. So I noticed some inconsistencies. For example, Aaron and Sweeney is more likely to prefer sweet foods over salty or savory foods. This is true. 
I absolutely have a sweet tooth and I am not a big fan of salty snacks. I like sweet snacks. That's why they call me Aaron and Sweetie. But yeah, you can see how there are conflicting results between 23andMe and Livewello. I'm a little more likely to take Livewello for their results because they actually give you the genotype for this one. Whereas 23andMe is kind of like, based on this percentage of people you might have genetic relations to, ah, here's what you probably have. But it's like, given these inconsistencies, I think that all results should be taken with a grain of salt because if they're not consistent with your same raw data from one website to the next, then that means each of these results is open to the personal interpretation of these websites. So elite physical power and sprint performance. Uh, that was one on 23andMe. It said that I apparently have elite physical power. So let's see if, let's see if those two align. Muscle composition, common in elite power athletes. So there are consistencies between those two and C it's because this test that they're giving you the results for, they're basing it off of your actual genotype. So that would explain why there's a little more consistency there. So that's good. That's That gives me a little more confidence in these websites. Painful menstrual period and BDNF gene. Aaron and Sweeney is less likely to have primary dysmenorrhea due to CC genotype for RS6265. Okay, so they're specifically testing for whether or not an individual would have painful menstrual cycles based on whether or not they would have this condition, which is caused genetically. However, I do have incredibly painful menstrual cycles when I do still have them. And even when I don't still have them, I have debilitating abdominal pain because of my uterus. But again, EDS, <laughs> methamphetamine, and risk of psychosis. Methamphetamines are what are commonly prescribed to patients with ADHD. I think it actually says that here. I do believe the medication I take, which is Vyvanse, is similar in chemical structure to methamphetamine. I think they're all in kind of the same family. I think it's dextroamphetamine that's in Vyvanse. But anyway, in my family, there is a long running history of experiencing psychosis. I was worried when I started using Vyvanse for ADHD because I was afraid that it might trigger psychosis given my family history. So that's cool. Response to bupropion for treatment of smoking cessation. Bupropion is the name of the drug that is Wellbutrin. Wellbutrin is the brand name. I've taken Wellbutrin. Here it is commonly used to treat depression and adult ADHD. It did almost nothing for my ADHD, which is odd because it is very similar to Vyvanse. The priority of what neurotransmitters it is active on is different. So on my medication, Vyvanse, it is primarily active on dopamine and then also active on norepinephrine. So something as simple as that could honestly make a huge difference. So it's weird how that happens. So Aaron and Sweeney may have an increased chance of response to bupropion treatment of smoking cessation due to AG genotype. It just kind of kept me in one place. It wasn't getting worse. It wasn't getting better. It was, I was just there. I realized once I was diagnosed with ADHD that the reason being I mainly needed treatment for executive dysfunction because my depression was a symptom of my executive dysfunction. It's not that my executive dysfunction was a symptom of my depression, which is why changing the order in which you are treating the same symptoms uh, really makes a big difference, which is why even though the two medications are active on the same neurotransmitters, the order in which they're working on those neurotransmitters is really important. Ritalin and autism spectrum disorder. Okay, hang on, I have to. Aaron and Sweeney is likely to have an increased response to methyl Venidate, which is Ritalin, due to CT genotype compared to people with other genotypes. Ritalin and Concerta are both part of this same medication. Interesting, because Ritalin is a stimulant, but from what I understand, Concerta is not a stimulant. So how does that work? Anyway, lupus. Aaron has a slightly higher than typical risk of developing lupus due to GT genotype for RS7574865. Systemic lupus is a chronic disease that causes inflammation of the tissues, which provides strength and flexibility to structures throughout the body. That sounds like EDS. The signs and symptoms of lupus vary among affected individuals and can involve many organs and systems, including skin, joints, kidneys, lungs, central nervous system. This literally sounds like EDS. Sorry, I don't know a lot about lupus. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. There are a lot of things I could check for. I don't know, a lot of these results are cool. And honestly, this video is getting long. So if you want me to make another video where I go through a bunch of these tests and see what the results are, I mean, I would be happy to do that. I can make a part two of this. I just don't want to bore you and I don't want to make like a super duper long video. If you would like me to make a part two of this and just go through Livewello results and talking more about genetics and stuff like that, just let me know and I'd be happy to do it. I think this stuff is super cool and super interesting, but uh, again, I don't want to bore you. So that's all. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks.
Bing 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 b